Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. So alhamdulillah we're back with the Pursuit for Happiness podcast. Alhamdulillah today we've uh, been blessed to be joined by the brothers, mashallah, imam. Uh, two imams, mashallah. We've got Mawlana Adnan and Mawlana Umair and Mawlana Raha, mashallah. So what's the topic for today, Ya Mawlana Adnan? I think we should, uh, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum to all, first of all. Yeah. Um, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad Dabbil qulubi wa dhwa'iha wa afiyat al-abdani wa shifa'iha wa nur al-absari wa diya'iha I think it's um, important for us to begin on um, the importance of Ramadan itself and its fuyuz, barakat, its virtues, its blessings and uh, aside um, the fasting of course um, which is the pivotal and essence of the Ramadan itself uh, but surrounding the fast itself are many elements, many things which we need to um, implement ourselves throughout the day. Um, as Imam al-Ghazali rahimullah, mentions that one should have a uh, designated time and schedule for his worship. And this intensifies um, in the month of Ramadan um, as of course the blessings and the thawab increases. Um, so I think the introduction in relation to the blessings, the virtues, and our role in the month itself, inshallah. Mashallah. I mean, Ramadan is, is that month where there's not a moment that's void of <coughs> blessings, isn't it? So Imam Sahib, what would you advise, you know, viewers, first thing to do, you know, first A'mal <coughs> in these first 10 days, what would you say? Take advantage of Ramadan. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Uh, what I did was uh, when Ramadan started, I made a list and I sent it out from the groups. Okay, what people can do on a daily basis for very easy. And I think I was speaking to one of the brothers um, today after Tarawi as well. Okay, that what can we do in our very busy schedule for the Deen for Ramadan? So I said, <coughs> what you can do is number one is read all of your rakahs for all of your salah okay meaning nafal and nafal sunnahs du wajibahs all of them do them number two recite 1000 durood daily subhanallah okay make that your habit number three read one juz from the quran every day number four read one ruku with translation so you understand what the Quran is saying. And number five, read at least five Qadha Salah. So it covers everything from Ibadah to your uh, Qadha as well. So something that you can keep you going in Ramadan every single day. Okay. That's just one element of just Ibadah. And another, another side of Rosa is your health. Don't overdo it at the time of Iftari, just eating. We control your diet. Imam Ghazali Ali Rahma he mentions in his Ihya al okay, that there are six things which a person should do in Roza. And one of them is to control himself at the time of eating. And after Roza, make his sincere tawbah in the court of Allah. And Dua is accepted that time. Yeah. Wow. SubhanAllah. Now we're just touching on that thing about reading one ruku with translation. You know, everyone's attending the mosque for Taraweeh. And unfortunately, what happens now is we only start to feel emotional when the person picks a certain tune of the Imam reciting. And is that really the objective that we're there to listen to sounds or the Quran a lot more than that? So I think there's a wicked thing you said there. Everyone should try to read one ruku from the coming juz and you know, pick on a few words. What, what does that mean? Then when the Imam starts to recite that you know, ruku, you start to relate to you know, the Quran as well. So it's amazing, amazing. I really connected. Yeah. After that, I came across a hadith that it's wajib to com- to do complete a khatam within the month of Ramadan as well as outside of Ramadan. And you said yourself to complete a khatam, you know, one juz every day. Yeah. But for those that can't, uh, then at least if you can attend the full 20 rakat of taraweeh, then at least by hearing you complete the khatam if you can't do it yourself. And I think that in of itself is reaching the objective but of a slightly lesser level, but I think it's. So those, possible. for example, who can't recite the Quran, unfortunately, they've forgotten the Quran. Take it. What they can do is just open the Quran. 
Just by opening the Quran, it is means of gaining guidance. Just looking at the Quran. Because looking at the Quran is ibadah in itself. And if they <laughs> can do that on top, have a habit of reciting salawat for the Prophet That is one of the best ibadahs that a person can do. In my opinion, I think in Ramadan, I think a person should study knowledge. There was a hadith, it is a daif hadith, but it mentioned to learn, to pray two nafla raka, you get that, you get that reward. To learn one ayah of the Quran, you get a hundred times that reward. And to learn one fiqh masala in which it's like ibadat and wise, it's a thousand times oh, greater. So then the, the greatness of fiqh has been compared ten times greater than to learn an ayah of the Quran. So I think in this month of Ramadan, when, uh, you know, um, fulfilling our obligations, one should, as well as do all the other fara'id, seek necessary knowledge for himself. At the same time, remember, you, it, the, you should always balance it out with mm. amal. Mm. Ilm is very, very important, no doubt. But if you balance it out with amal, it becomes, it blossoms. That yeah. ilm become, becomes beautiful then. But I think, unfortunately, many people, they attend tarawih and they get in the zone but they don't realize that they've invalidated the salah. Why? Because they didn't seek the necessary knowledge. Because if they if they had sought that, then they know that they they would know that they'd be doing that thing right, and they'd know that they're on the right tracks and mm-hmm. anything. The, the point is that we should have objectives for Ramadan. Yeah. It? Ramadan is a guest from Allah. It's a life. And mm-hmm. what does the Hadith say? Man kana yu'minu billahi wal yawm al-akhir fal yukrim life. Honor your guest. So the same when a guest comes to our house, we think like, what well, I'm going to serve up for that person. I'm going to tidy up my, you know, my house and all of that. So we should actually have objectives, what I need to achieve in this Ramadan. Because yeah. otherwise, wasting Ramadan, you know, there's specifically hadith about that, Raghima Anfu, mm. may that person, you know, perish, knows be rubbed in the soil, who witnesses Ramadan, but doesn't get his salvation. I no. think, uh, no. sorry, Maulana Rahad, just really quickly, yeah. has mentioned a very good point. Uh, again, Mashallah, Imam Ghazali is his works are supporting us uh, in in this series. Um, he talks about the um, he splits the ummah in four different categories, yeah. and if I can remember correctly, the first two, uh, the greatest of them are those that sincerely seek knowledge for the pleasure of Allah and His Rasul, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and second in that category are those that spend their most of their time in worship. So what you've mentioned is a very good point, I think, for ulama and for students, especially beginners, Ramadan, because classes are not on yourself, mashallah, you're back from uh, Jamia. Um, this is a time to reflect and go back to your asbaq. Mm. Mashallah, there's, there's more students of knowledge here and hufaz, and this is a, a good time uh, to, to really uh, pick up um, uh, where your weaknesses are and improve and go back and, and, and uh, go over your asbaq. And for those that are not um, active students of the deen or do not have uh, the resources or it's not been facilitated for them, then mashallah, as Hafiz, Mala Hafiz Umar Sahib has beautifully mentioned, um, ibadah, Quran, translation, commentary, because these things are widely available via phone and of course, kitab as well. Um, so just to, to I like add. to add, you know, before everything, before you ibadah, before your ilm, I would recommend everyone to sincerely make dua in the beginning of Ramadan. Because if you read Surah Baqarah and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about Ramadan, the final thing what did he say? وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ the, the, When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about Ramadan, he says okay, when your people, when the people ask you, about me, فَإِنِّي قريب. I am close. أُجِيبُ دَعْوَةَ الدَّعِدَ دَعَانِي I accept all of your du'as. So I think the first thing what everyone should be doing is making du'a Ya Allah, give me istiqama in Ramadan. I think addition to that is uh, it coincides with intention because there's a hadith in Bukhari الدُّعَوْ مُخُ الْعِبَادَةِ no. uh, Du'a is the essence of worship. And usually mukh means brain here. Mm. But you know, if you actually look at the word mukh, uh, it translates as khali sukulli shay, the yeah. devoutness, the purity of everything. And going back to dua and being pure is also coincided with intentions. And I think these three, they don't they don't connect with each other for no reason. So I think what you said is uh, it shows you that you're sincere towards your, yeah. your objectives and it shows that you actually want to change. It, it reminds me of that hadith from I think Jami Tirbazi, he said, Allah Ta'ala sallam, he gave the example of a mu'min that a mu'min is like a palm tree. Hadith says the mu'min is like a palm tree. 
and the ulama have given the meaning of this is get the palm tree if you take off where the leaves are the palm tree doesn't grow again it's dead so the asal of a mu'min is his niyyah his intentions his duas Yeah. It goes further, your niyyah takes things further. Yeah. You can do the same action, yeah. but depending on the niyyah, the action can actually take you even Jahannam. There are people who are praying Salah yeah. with the niyyah, yeah. showing off ostentatious. They're praying Salah, like it's the greatest act of worship there is. But because of the niyyah, it's taken them yeah, you know, where you don't want to be. And you know, funnily enough, um, I asked one of my teachers, it's like, when we intend for Salah or Dua or any act of worship, We tend to get sidetracked and go into state of heedlessness. And he said, you're accountable for what you solely intended in the beginning. He said, it's your duty to kind of keep on track within that act that you're doing, but you're not you're, you're, you're not taking into account if you naturally you go, you become heedless. And I think that's the beauty of intentions, <coughs> is that what you solely intended for, you're accountable for that. Yeah. Well, Anna, how do you find that you work in a professional environment? And you, I'm guessing you're still working in Ramadan. Too. So what have you done, if you have done, uh, you know, to make preparations for Ramadan? Mm-hmm. Like I said, honoring the guests, what have you done? What can you do as, as a person working in a professional environment? Is there anything you can tell the audience? Um, I think you have to, there has to be a natural disposition of uh, acts of worship from yourself. Right. You can't um, force anything upon yourself mm-hmm. because when you are working, and uh, you're obviously tasked to your work or whatever it is uh, you're doing on that day. Um, it can be difficult to, um, like we've mentioned, um, carry out these, these acts of worship. But the greatest thing um, in work is knowing, number one, it's the month of Ramadan and all the rewards have been doubled. And because you are working and already working hard, and striving because someone who is at home and fasting of course he's going to get the reward but the person who is working and fasting he knows that my reward is going to be much greater mm. there's less sleep there's less eating there's more screen time more work time and it can be very difficult but subhanallah the barakah of ramadan is such that even when you are working and you're sleeping less um, you're still able to to kind of uh, get through the day Um, but I think it's really important. It does help um, because on your lunch time, uh, you're not having to eat any food. Um, you're not having any drink. You're not having any snacks at your desk. This is very typical work life. You're not having any breaks either. Um, you are of course having your breaks and your lunch, but there's there's no food involved. There's there's no drinking, no 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 eating. So that helps with your wudu as well, um, and it gives you time to go into prayer room and to reflect and to pray your namaz. If you're praying your dhuhr, your asr, as mentioned, try pray all your rak'ahs. Um, and I think the spare time that we have in work um, to spend that in, in dhikr rather than foul or foolish talk mm. with colleagues, that would be my honest uh, um, uh, advice. Now use that time to recite the Qur'an. Because like myself, if you're doing a 10-hour shift, yeah. uh, for example, today I worked from 10 a.m. till 8 p.m. That's 10 hours. And by the time you come home, You are, you are tired. So the time that you have in work, use your breaks and use your lunch uh, as that time of your worship, your dhikr, your azkar, your dua. Um, go for a walk, recite your Qur'an then. Go for a walk and, and recite your salawat. Um, so without overdoing it, of course, I think these are little things we can implement in, in the work life. Uh, you know, I think you mentioned about dhikr. I think it's an important point because uh, Imam Ghazali actually mentions that The tongue, uh, the tongue is a reflection of the heart. Gee. And I think one one task we could get carried away with is, you know, riba is, uh, you know, uh, backbiting and slamming people without even acknowledging that we're mm. doing it because it becomes so natural upon the tongue. Gee. But you know, if you actively, like you said, do dhikr and we control our tongue to the, to the ability where <coughs> we're actually <coughs> acknowledging what we are saying and it's not just coming out uh, second. Uh, sec- uh, second to none then it gives us a state of not only are we reflecting within what we're saying but it gives us a chance to reflect outside of what we're saying as well and you know controlling the tongue is obviously one of the hadiths about if you can 
safeguard what is in between the two jaw bones and, the, and the, in between two legs and I can guarantee Jannah for that person. Jannah, subhanallah. Mm-hmm. So if that's half of your Jannah there, then I'm sure many of us would want to safeguard that half of Jannah for ourselves. So I think it's a... It's a, it's a, it's a it's really it's makes you realise just how through Wasila process so Jannah has been made so easy yeah. for us. And all of this talk that we've mentioned, like preparation for something, having goals, being consciously aware throughout the day, all of those things do they not fall under the definition of taqwa mm. subhanallah and when allah defines the gharad or the hadaf what is the objective of, ta- of fasting that's the highest objective of your fast is to attain that taqwa so i think that's something you know we should advise mm. everyone around us that look, be mindful of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in all states never be in a state of ghafla especially in this month mm. Mm. This mm. month and you know with, with taqwa I think many people think you always have to be in a spiritual high but uh, Imam Ghazali again, again he mentions that taqwa is defined as wad'ul ashya fi mawadiha is placing things in their designated positions so if you're doing dhikr or if you're seeking knowledge and that's the thing you're supposed to be doing then that is the mo- that's the highest level of taqwa you doing that thing within that moment and I think people are mistaken if you're doing or you know sit down on the, on the masala and that's it 8 hours straight Lock the door. Yeah, we, that, we that's good. That's a scholar, isn't it? About when I'm at work, what can I do? What amal can I do? And what did he say? He said, perfect your work. Yeah, that's do your work yeah. properly. That's your taqwa. Yeah, that's, that's, your, that's your, your highest level of taqwa. Subhanallah. So I think people, um, you know, when I when I found out, it really put into perspective, put into perspective a lot of things, you know, because we always think of taqwa, you know, being of looking at the lives of the awliya and doing what they do. But Imam Ghazali mentions that is 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 doing things and placing things where they belong. So like you said, if a person is doing 9 to 5 and that's his bread and butter and he has to provide for his family, then know that that thing is not only the highest form of taqwa, he's fulfilling an obligation for Allah. SubhanAllah. And then he, in turn, his wife is uh, fulfilling her obligation at home, the kids, etc. And it's all, it all puts barakah in one's family and life. And well, we'll hear people ask the question. SubhanAllah. Is that in Ramadan, when you start Ramadan, the motivation is there. <coughs> By the time he's in the middle, it's gone. Okay, uh, so fate, well, why, fate, why fate does it go fate, down? Fate. Why does that fade go away? Is they say in English, you know, you failure to prepare, then prepare to fail. Mm. And that's why ulama, they say that Rajab is the month of planting that seed. And then you water in Sha'ban and you eat from it in Ramadan. Mm. So all those niyat that we made, and you should never stop making righteous intentions, even if they're not realistic. You know, those intentions, Allah will give you reward for it. But they have to be paired with preparation in it. Yeah. Instead of that, you have to prepare. I think that as well as people, they go too hard. Uh, they go way too hard at the start. I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. Second, third day, you're burnt out. Yeah. Like you've not done one khatam out of Ramadan, how are you mm-hmm. going to achieve the 10 15 that you've intended? Yeah. In Ramadan? I think another thing is that you know, you're mentioning uh, sinning in Ramadan, mm. okay, like riba or using Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, unnecessarily using it in Ramadan. The istiqama on your ibadah, the istiqama of learning knowledge will eventually fade away because what's going to happen is eventually your time is going to be spent on those things so if, if you cut down on those things and focus on the, the things which have which matter then i think it it will help people to stay on to the end of Ramadan. see i think this is a psychological thing and this point comes to mind and i've mentioned this in juma many times as well that we talk about in the deen unfortunately very sadly and i'm of course culprit to this as well that it fades and it goes down but one thing we fail to realize and this is a sabak a lesson for us and for our uh, honorable viewers is that we never talk about the dunya saying it's faded away it's gone down Mm. and we don't forget to wake up in the morning and brush our teeth you're never going to hear someone say i brush my teeth for 20 days the 21st day, I forgot, it's gone down, make dua for me. It's not going to happen. You're not going to forget to wake up. You're not going to forget to have breakfast in the morning. Even if it's two sips of a tea or a coffee or toast, whatever you have in the morning, cereal, you will have a bite to eat and leave. These things don't fade down. Why? Because it's dunya and we have made our nafs accustomed to this. Mm-hmm. But subhanallah, with the deen as such, and as you mentioned, Hubba Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, this is something that only increases. Sayyidi Allah has mentioned that if one has the 
medicine to cure me for the, from the love of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa I will turn that medicine away because I only want this to increase because once I take that medicine, it's going to fade away. So let the things of the dunya fade away, not the things of the deen. So I think it's a psychological battle is, uh, you know, it, it's always the deen that's fading away and going down. Not our dunya, our dunya is always getting better and better. You know, relating to that, I was reading something uh, not too long ago and it said the increase in the, in the, the backfire of the, the penalty or the effect of sin is an increase in the attachment to the dunya. And many of us only, we only think that we sin when we, th when we think, oh, I've just sinned. But many of us, we pass time and go by time and time, time goes by, yet we still, yet we are involved within sin. Mm -hmm. And having that heedlessness of sin is the pinnacle of heedlessness, in my opinion. And I think that itself is what is the domino effect of, of, of why people fall into this trap of being literally gripped by the color of the dunya. There is a dua that um, I read from Sayyid Rabia. Subhanallah. And uh, she said, May Allah steal from you everything which steals you from Him. Allah. We should make dua for that. Like, ya Allah, all those things which are turning me away from you, Ya Allah, remove it from my life. Allah. I'm watching a speech once, and then the alim was saying okay, that we talk about financial crisis, and we're all worried about it. Mm. We talk about health crisis, mm. and we're all worried about it. Well, have we ever thought about my sins? Spiritual or crisis. ibadat crisis oh, yeah. right. that has gone down have you ever thought about that no so it's always about the dunya yeah. but if you think about the deen as well then just compare from last year and this year have my ibadat my my deeds increased or they've gone down everyone should ponder that in yeah. themselves okay. has it increased or decreased i think you could just take it from there you know, I think Ramadan is also a good uh, point in terms of reflection because you can compare yourself to each Ramadan. What I achieved last Ramadan, what am I going to do better this Ramadan? Yeah. If I've not built upon that and I'm doing that exact same thing, then I've stayed stagnant across the whole year and I've not improved. But why would you touch what you talked about sitting before? I think, especially in the UK living, people are earning haram and they don't feel the effects of Ramadan in their heart mm. because of their earning. Mm. This, this hadith that Imam Arba'in Nawwi has. Yeah, in this in, 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 yes, yes. Yes. Haram, yes, haram, yes, yes. Yes, yes. Haram. Yeah. How will Allah, how can you expect Allah to accept your dua? He's wearing haram. Haram, he's eating, he's eating. everything haram. Yeah. So if, really awakening, so if you want to have a change in Ramadan, then oh. start first thing from your Rizq that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Allah. giving you, right, that make it the means of halal. And I think Imam Ghazali, he says that if a person makes toba, but then he still is in sin, it means that his rizq is haram, there's some, somewhere, somehow, that is haram in there. That he's not getting istiqamah on his toba. Yeah, there was a, I think there was a hadith mentioned by Imam Ghazali, the sin is arbaeen fi usooli deen, about eating halal. And yeah. it's such a basic thing, yet it, he, I think it's something man akala halalan arba'ina yawman ajra min qalbihi yanabi' al hikma ala lisan he something like that he says whoever whoever eats halal food for 40 days only 40 days halal food then he said the springs of wisdom gush forth from his heart and they manifest upon his tongue subhanallah and that's just from eating that's just from eating I was reading in Bahari Sharia and they mentioned a hadith but it was a quote of Mullah Ali, okay, and he said, okay, if people were not to pay their zakat properly, so halal rizq, okay, if they don't do it, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will put a drought on the earth. So what we see the financial crisis right now, on the earth right now, if you look at it, it is the means of not paying zakat properly. Like we see people, the Qatari, trying to buy Manchester United for, f for five point something billion pounds, if they were to pay that in zakat, there would be no poverty on the earth. And you know, I think I think mm -hmm. people miss the essence of everything because um, me and uh, Hafiz Sabi were speaking about this. You know, zakat actually comes from the word to purify. Yeah. And people think that when you give zakat, that you're not. We well, zakat him. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, yeah. do we think that we're losing something? No, yeah. it, it purifies your wealth. It gives yeah. you more. Yeah. And that's the thing. People think. 
uh, that by giving you a losing yeah. or by giving you a winning because they, they they compare the dunya giving and they compare that with the dini giving but the dini giving is always the opposite of the dunya giving because the dini gives back to you yeah and the dunya will always take from you so and <coughs> whoever is stingy and giving in, in his deen mm. you've been stingy with yourself you didn't yeah. yourself some of the things that a lot of people start to do in ramadan yeah. is they do actually think about zakat yeah mm-hmm. unfortunately because we all do forget what uh, which moment did we become sahih you know and all yeah that. but then there's another thing as well that people are not seeking the knowledge to know what i need to give zakat on yeah understand and that's why i actually congratulate our imam here who gave his khutbahs prior to ramadan sure. was on zakat mm. yeah i did the same thing people were doing you know isti'adad ramadan yeah. istiqbal ramadan etc but he went on zakat and i was yeah. pondering what should i speak about and that was absolutely amazing point mm. because this is the time it's like people are our businessmen they don't know okay, they'll pay their zakat yearly but they'll do it according to the financial year yeah oh, right okay. but that's wrong that's but it's actually according to the islamic year mm. given you hit the, you, you, the nisab okay then you pay your zakat it's got nothing to do with the financial year mm. this is that's what something you really, basic you really do need to sit sit down with the imam with yeah. mufti and go over your finances. You, that's not something that you can really do on your own. On your, on your own. Yeah. But uh, just touching upon what uh, Maulana uh, has, mashallah, he's mentioning all the beautiful points yeah, today, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, in regards to um, to um, cool masadi, yeah. what did you mention? Um, he's had the forty days. <laughs> yes, can't uh, cope. This brings a flowing. <laughs> Yeah, so as I was saying, um, every person, I think this would be a greatest form of um, betrayal to oneself. Um, I think every person, uh, even ourselves, know where we lack in and where we are weak. And where, this is, this is very dangerous on the tongue as well, very heavy, where we transgress the limits when of the sharia, of, the sharia yeah. of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the boundaries. So I think Ramadan is... Uh, a month in which we can reflect on this and abstain from that sin and constantly ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to remove that sin or that deed from our life which is disrupting all other ibadat and as you mentioned the du'as are not being accepted and the story comes to mind of Imam Malik when he praised Imam Shafi'i and, and said to him that I see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has wrapped your heart with the light of knowledge, with the light of ilm. Because he had a great memory. And one time, Imam Shafi'i, correct me, uh, Maulana, if I'm wrong, um, that he was out on the street or the bazaar, the market of, that, of, 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 that, of his time, and the wind blew. And he caught a glimpse uh, of a female's ankle or that area. And when he came back to his asbaq and his muta'ala, he found that he was forgetting things. But he assessed himself. He, of course, pondered. And subhanAllah, the, the, the level of their tawbah, tawbah was, was, was Actually, something that we cannot teacher. comprehend. He went, he went to, to his teacher. teacher. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And he recalls it in a poetry. Yeah. He says, Shakawtu ila waki'in su'a hifwi Fa'arshadani ila tarki al-ma'asi وأخبرني بأن العلم نور ونور الله لا يهدى للعاصي. سبحانه. I went to Al Wakir, Ibn Jarrah, his teacher, and I complained to him about my weak memory, and he told me to leave sins because this knowledge is a light, and Allah doesn't give that light to a sinful person. So it is interesting that we all we all ascribe to you know, and we want to achieve such high levels of yeah. knowledge, but we're still sinning. Mm. You know, you know I think, mean, yeah, it's never gonna happen. I think uh, with the sinning, it comes with your companionship because the hadith, a deen wala, uh, sorry, a rajul ala deeni khalili. The man, the person, he is according, he's on the path to religion of the of his friends. So if your companionship and uh, is you know, and your and your friends are of those people who are gonna engage in useless talk and backbiting, then you know you plant the seed before ramadan and you'll have the fruits of that in ramadan so if you continue to backbite you can, what you're doing you're gonna have to you know Ali you mentioned it juma juma once he said okay, that the closest to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala half of the way is fasting half of the, the way is just fasting the rest of the half is just ramaz rosa zakat 
namaz, fa- uh, the hajj, wagara, wagara, there all them. So we are in the month of Ramadan. We are fasting. So half of the way is already there for you. Allah. It's already made for you. The rest of it just need to be small. Just mm. read your namaz and stuff like that. Easy That's, yeah. Yeah. And you know, we can compare this um, this month of Ramadan as a nourishment for ourselves. Yeah. Because you, you can compare it of like when you have a broken finger, mm. technically that broken finger is sometimes or when you have a, a sprained finger you tend to pair it with the finger next to it why because this is strong it's sturdy it's straight and when you plaster it together or something that's broken for such amount of time then that same finger that was once broken becomes sturdy strong and straight i think ramadan is a nourishment for for us is that ramadan is the month is that finger for us to lean on and i think us being the broken finger yeah. is oh, wait, uh, they're, bo- they're both broken <laughs> but you know you, you said fasting is halfway you can actually feel it in the air of Ramadan isn't it? Yeah. sometimes the, the atmosphere you can almost bite it it's like you can tell this is Ramadan the night time doesn't feel the same yeah. if you actually question why is that it's because in Ramadan you're actually doing what you were created for yeah. you're, you've woken up upon worship and you slept upon worship yeah. your day your evening was upon worship yeah. that's where we find happiness like for example every year in our Kuba Masjid we have on the 27th night we have a uh, a mehfil in the remembrance of the Ahlul Bayt so the Namazi they come at for example Asr time for the Jalsa stay for Maghrib then stay for Tarawih then Khatm Al-Quran then Khatm Al-Quran Dua then Zikr and Dua so they're there in the Masjid for around 8 hours and you know, mm. with the hadith about the shaitan's trapped away, you know, it is as if the shaitan is trapped away to the extent because, as uh, Hafsab said, you wake up, ibadah, you go to sleep, you go to sleep, and you know, you're ending it with the ibadah. So you have no time to do your useless activities, you have no time to sin. So it is as if the shaitan is locked up because you have, you've got that, your, your free time is, you know, is bounded by what it's supposed to be. And you know, Ramadan is also, is also a good reflection because it, allows us to acknowledge we acknowledge of what our true potential is you know outside of ramadan you know we don't sacrifice we don't do our acts of ibadah but within ramadan we suddenly sacrifice we suddenly do more and more and more and we realize and we think all it takes was sacrifice in the beginning that's what you see ramadan is a madrasa mm. they showed you what you're capable of in fact you talk about Ahlul Bayt. that's another thing that very that is quite neglected in ramadan is in ramadan there are actually major key dates where certain figures of certain individuals from the sahaba from the awliya allah you know they passed away on that day of some major event and as muslims we should be aware like how do we really pass by the 17th of ramadan and not remember the greatest day mm-hmm. or one of the greatest days in history Yawm al-Badr, Yawm al-Furqan, yeah. Yawm yeah. you know that day that was it was a, yeah. it was a pivotal day yeah it went this way that way Allahumma intahalik hadhi al-usaba falan tu'abad al-ba'at al-yawm that's what the prophet said on that day like, oh allah if that group is defeated tomorrow you're never going to be worshipped on this earth till Qiyamah. Yeah. So we should remember those days. There are days where we should remember, for example, Yawm Ali, Sayyidina Imam Ali, Karram Allah Wajah Al-Kareem, Sayyidina Aisha, Sayyidina Khadija, Sayyidina Khadija. all Khadija. these great individuals, <laughs> without which the deen wouldn't have reached us. They were the people who deen passed by through through them, transmitted through mm-hmm. them, mm-hmm. and then no There's one thing you it's spoke it's about this. Yeah. Uh, sorry, yeah. Hafsah, please mm-hmm. forgive me. Um, yesterday that we share our experiences uh, like we have today, myself and, and yourself, and yourself with Qubar, which is good. But really, we should be feeding off and using the experiences of the great individuals that you've mentioned. Um, so tying it all together, uh, like you've mentioned, it's really important that we we worship Allah, we ask for that steadfastness, but we do it using their techniques because it was the best of techniques. I remember because when we were sitting in front of the Gumbad of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, myself, Qibla Hafiz Uzair sahib, on my right hand side, and the Honorable Father, our Ustad, um, Huzur Mufassir Al-Quran, and they were reciting a kalam of Sayyidi Allah Hazrat, and it was Uthadu Parda, Dikhadu Chahra, and in there, there's, uh, he's expressing deep love for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and as Qibla Ustad were reciting, they began to cry, and they then kind of, in a, in a whisper tone, made a, a dua 
that may Allah allow us to beg the way Allah has begged. So it's not always about our experiences and, 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 and what not. It's really important for us to take from these great individuals and implement that in our life because I think it's more muqarrab in acceptance with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, you just mentioned going to Umrah. If someone says that they don't feel the effects of Ramadan, then such a person needs to go to Umrah in Ramadan. Umrah. Because he said Allah Ta'ala Sallam said that the person who does Umrah in Ramadan is as though he's done Hajj with me. Allah. Allah. So Ramadan in itself is Barakah. And then being in the Haram in Ramadan is Noor and Ala Noor. Subhanallah. Okay. So are you going this year? I'm going in the second of Itikaf. MashaAllah. MashaAllah. So if you want to have a change, then go to Umrah. Like me and uh, Adran Bhai mentioned, we were there last year. Allah, and the, luckily, we had uh, Laylatul Qadr in Madinatul Nabi. Uh, our last night was Laylatul Qadr and it started raining, wow. pouring rain, so much rain that the masjids were flooded. So then they had to delay the Tarawih for like an hour, cleaning the masjid. SubhanAllah. Ramazan Sharif in Medina is such an, an amazing experience. It's you can't put it in words, you can't describe it, you can't deliver a bayan. Some will say, I could write a book on this, but you actually cannot. It's a feeling, it's a sensation. You have to go there and experience this in the month of Ramadan whilst you're fasting and in the uh, blessed Khadaman Sharifan of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa So like me and the brother Danami went there and we had like five days in the Bakr Sharif. We did three Umrahs in 48 hours. Three Umrahs. Because time was limited. So we took advantage of it as much as possible. Okay. And no. Maulana Ilyas um, Attar Qadri, Amir al Sunnat, he mentions this in one of his kalams, beautiful share. Uh, you were sharing it with myself the other day. The Iqbar Pir Dikhado. Ramzan. Uh, Iqbar Pir Dikhado. Ramzan Me Medina. Beshak Banalo Aqa. Mehman Do Gharika. So, Ya Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, even if you allow us to become a guest, a visitor of your Madinatul Munawwara, even for a mere moment, but in the month of Ramadan, and this is it, it, sufficient for our, our Bakhish and Nijat. Because you were saying that when Ramadan comes, you start doing what, what we be made for, we go to the place where it came from. Allah. Okay. Where everything came from. So the effects of it, you feel it double, triple. Okay. No one to do something, uh, yeah. your normal host is after Zazet. Yeah. You know what he's like, he's, he's volatile, you don't know what he's going to do next. Mm. So I thought, I'll, I'll take over from that today. Okay. I will call him on, because the pursuit for happiness without him is not pursuit of yeah. happiness. Isn't it? I think he's the source of happiness in this room. But Maulana, if you want to say a few words, I think the audience are requesting it, inshallah. I'm going to be stick this year. It's going to be the stick, off camera. The stick. The stick? Yes, yeah, salam. Sure. Away in pursuit of happiness and you bring happiness. Yes, salam. Yeah. Well, we need to switch up, man. I think we're all tired from Taraweeh. Mm-hmm. All this quiet, calm speech. Any questions, Maulana, from the audience or from any requests? The two shahs had a question. The, the two shahs had a question. Say you then. Speak you, then. On the you can tell we haven't prayed to any rakats in a while. You don't need to have a problem. See tomorrow. No, we're telling you that. Go on. He's got a question. I think Shahs has got a question. Speaking of Mecca and Medina, mm. is there any out of the two which are kind of, are they both uh, balanced or is there one that's better than the other? What, in virtue? Yeah. So he's asking, that's only Imam Sarif can answer. He's asking, is Mecca and Medina the same in terms of virtue? Is one greater than the other? Do they ban- are they balanced that it's one greater than the other? Uh, majority of the ulama are this thing that Mecca is afzal because of his, uh, you know, because you go there with ihram. You can't cut trees and you can't do the uh, kill an animal, whereas in Medina you can do that. However, the ulama, the ushar, the lovers, they prefer to go to Medina. So we had the share of Allah that fits perfectly. Okay. So we are the lovers, so why do you need to argue on this topic? Hmm? Okay. Allah, anything else? Any okay. questions we got? I think we should wind up then, inshallah, for tomorrow. Inshallah. Yeah, let's wrap it up. The uh, main thing is we should all have objectives and mm. we, we don't want to find the situation where we leave this month the same way we came into it. Yeah. We mm. want change, inshallah. Sacrifice. 
حتى تنفق و we have to sacrifice we our time our wealth you're already t- sacrificing your health mm. isn't it mm. so don't be stingy on yourself don't be stingy on yourself maximize Ramadan if there's change you're looking for in your life it's gonna happen in this month mm. this is the month where it's gonna happen she told you up to me you got no excuse to go on it mm. it's no excuse in it the yeah. last re- remarks from uh, Maulana he's looking very wise over there no no I was just attentively listening to yourself but uh, I'm also of the opinion that uh, there is no pursuit of happiness without Maulana on my right hand side. So tomorrow, if he's not on, um, we're going to have to put some strict measures in place. Sure <laughs> and get him on the sofa, inshallah. I thought it was a pursuit of happiness with your elders. As the Hadith says. He's older well, than He is him. older than himself. <laughs> <laughs> he's the oldest in the room. <laughs> <laughs>